New Year, and welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. And Brian, this week, has brought us a, a New Year's beer. Is this Can we call this New Year's? Well, I would stick with this being just a uh, winter beer. Winter beer. Okay. Um, I, I have a surprise for you later, oh, yes. which is a, is, is a New Year's beer. I so love this surprises. is a winter beer in the seasonal variety. So we'll go with that, and then I'll pull out the surprise beer later. For now, you. I know enough to know that uh, this, this isn't readily available. Right. Uh, necessarily. Founders Brewing Company out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, this one is called Backwoods Bastard. It's the barrel aged, a, a let's see, ale aged in oak bourbon barrels. Yeah, it's basically a barrel aged Scottish or Scotch ale is the style we're going to. We have not covered this style yet this year. Scotch ale? Yes. Man, you're trying from Scotland, here. basically. Okay, don't, well, it's not going to be like drinking Scotch whiskey. You don't have to. You don't have to dumb it down for me. I get okay. Scotch. You knew. You knew Scotch was Scotland. unless Scotch was like you know I don't know. I knew, could be from China. I they uh, take Scotch tape and put it in the boil. Mm. That's where it comes from. You get that glue taste. Yeah, mm. gotcha. All it's right, really sticks with it. Founders Backwoods Bastard uh, Ale aged in bourbon barrels. So as you're opening that. And pouring that. This is the, uh, they have a barrel aged series that Founders does. Um, mm-hmm. And they put them out in four packs. And so this is one of those four packs that they do uh, throughout the year. But this one um, is nice and roasted color, kind of a darker amber in, in uh, the look. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll smell sweet. It does. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. on purpose because that's how it's brewed. So I'll give you a little rundown on it. This is definitely another one of those beers that opens up as it warms. So your so, three drink test will definitely uh, yield different results. So do well. I need to try it first now? I would just to okay. get it so it's to get a base cold. Yep. Um, Scotch ale, also the same. That's like whiskey, right? Man. Yeah. You're you're trying me here. Gosh. I saw two chest hairs poke out <laughs> just there, just the new ones. Um, this oh. is Scotch ale. Also known as a wee heavy. You might see that term some oh, places. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, I tend to stay away from that because that scares me. Well, this might be why. Okay. Uh, they're basically a strong pale ale from first brewed, they think, in Edinburgh, Scotland. Okay. Um, around uh, 1780s or so is where I can trace it back to. Okay. Um, the ones that we brew in the United States tend to be strong, 7.5% to 10, 11, 12. This one, I think, is like a whopping double digit, maybe, especially with the barrel aging. Mm, let's see. Maybe keep, like, keep going. I'll I would guess at least here. 11 is my guess. Here we go. 11 exactly. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Um, really, the sweetness is the main thing that you're going to get from a wee heavy or a Scotch, Scottish ale. Um, that's because of how it's brewed. Basically, they brew it at a very high... The resting temperature is very high um, of the beer. So after they boil it, they keep it at a certain level before they cool it down. Okay. They keep it at this level, like 100, I think it was 158 degrees, which is pretty warm. And that makes these sugars that are really unfermentable, mm-hmm. so they don't um, change their structures other than basically give the beer um, richer mouthfeel and the sweetness that you, that you taste. Okay. So this one, as you're drinking it, that first drink was probably pretty barrel heavy. Very. This is also a beer, um, kind of like we did a couple weeks ago, where I say I buy them, and then I, I think it was a Christmas bomb. I buy them, then mm-hmm. I don't drink them for a year. Normally, I would sit on this for a year just to let that I'm surprised because it cooled off. On the back, it says bottled on 9-7 of 18. Mm-hmm. So this is you're opening this early. I am. I am. Mm-hmm. See, for me, like that's just vanilla and whiskey is what I taste. That's absolutely And I love yes. it. Mm. Yeah. It makes my toes warm. <laughs> All the way down there. Um, around here in the United States, um, Founders makes a Scotch ale. They also make a beer that's they're kind of like their non-barrel version of this. It's called the Dirty Bastard. Yep. Um, you'll also hear ones. Oscar Blues has one called Old Chub. Old Chub. Um, mm-hmm. Sierra Nevada has one. Alesmith. Have you ever had any of their beers? Yeah, I have. They make a one that's just called Alesmith Wee Heavy. Okay. And then every startup brewery or chain brewery, like a Granite City, they mm-hmm. seem to have one called the, the Kilt Lifter. Ah, uh, yes. I know Seitner had a shirt from them. From some place in Arizona, he was just pumping that beer. He thought mm. it was so great. Yep. So that's that's the style of those beers. Interesting. Um, 
Scotch ales usually have smoked malt added to them to get the peated, smoky flavor of a Scotch whiskey. That's kind of where it comes from. So they will talk through that process. So they'll smoke them. They'll like, like you would do meats or something. Like you. I would... mean, similar. Yeah. Okay. I mean, more less less heat. Okay. Um, than you would like cook something to eat it, mm-hmm. but you're basically just trying to smoke up the smoke flavor. So then that you add that in. So okay. most beers do not have a smoked malt. It's just a normal malt or whatever. I would think that'd be off putting in a beer, but too much of it maybe. Too much of it can definitely be bitter. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is also a category of beers called Rausch beers, which are basically smoked beers, and it's smoky on purpose. And there's some beers that it's like, like if you walked into a barbecue pit and opened your mouth, that's what it tastes like. Aye. And those are, some of those styles are 600 years old. So it's hmm. something that's been around a long time. Okay. It's just more of a, a European palate than, than here in the States. We don't have a lot of those. Damn Germans. <laughs> <laughs> this time we're cursing them. Mm-hmm. Smoked beer. Um, you should get, as it warms up a little bit, you'll get some fruit hints, maybe mm. some plum or some just dried fruit in general. They said raisins, but I don't ever taste raisins. Um, I wouldn't, see. I wouldn't choose to taste raisins in the first place, but I, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm not a raisin. Mm-mm. There's a gross man. Mm. Just the little box makes me mad. Yep. Sun Valley, go to heck. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, 90 shilling. You ever heard of that beer? I've had that a lot. That's mm-hmm. a Scotch ale. No, it's not. Yes, it is. What? That's a, you like it. It's from Odell. I do. I I like Odell. So here's a lot. the thing about Scotch ales that I found interesting and super confusing. Um, they used to be taxed on their beers in Scotland. Okay. And the tax was in shilling form, so that's where the name comes from. Ah. And the denomination of the shilling was basically how good the beer was, was how much tax you'd have to pay. Okay. So like the top level beers were like 80 to 100 shillings was a really good beer or a strong beer and 90 shilling is the name so you'd see in scotland up until like the 40s 1940s um the beers would just be called like 30 shilling 40 shilling 50 shilling and that would be how much you'd have to pay on tax for what they call and this is a a measurement that i know dolan uses a lot a Mm -hmm. hogshead oh yeah which, if for I, you and I, I don't know, it's mm-hmm. a cask of 64 gallons of beer. You'd have to pay X tax on that, which is a 90 shilling or whatever. So that's where those names come from. Okay. And all those beers are categorized as a shilling beer, which is confusing because that in the confusing. United States, people name their beers that, but it doesn't mean that that's just the tax that would have been on that style of beer hmm. if it was in Scotland. So, like, the highest would be 100. So you got to give it to Odell. They're like, well, it's not, it's not 100, but it's 90. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. I think it was just, you know, it, it did go up. I saw some. And it was also about um, alcohol volume, too, played um, a part into it as okay. well. So it's just a matter of um, matching your shilling and your alcohol volume okay. to the number. This blows my mind that I, because I've had 90 shilling a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's when I go to Colorado, it's everywhere. It, I mean, it's the it's it's that in Coors Light and Avery and New Belgium. Yeah. Right? I mean, they're everywhere. It's virtually everywhere. That's one of their flagship beers, I know for sure. They it was one of the first ones they make, and they make it year-round all the time. Can it, bottle it, that sort of thing. But it's huh. it's it's what you would get if you didn't put this in the whiskey barrel, basically, is what Odell's 90-shilling version is. This is just barrel-aged. That's what we're really tasting right now. The oaky, kind yeah. of single malty, scotchy, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. I mean, if you took away that and you got mm-hmm. what we will get as it warms up is more what you're used to. That 90-shilling. Yeah flavor correct interesting so hmm. you'll see anything that's was over 100 shillings because it did go up to like i think i saw 120 was the highest i could find oh. those were the wee heavies okay because that was they were extra alcohol and extra mm-hmm. cost so they were wee heavy and that's if you see that designation then you're going to know here in america usually that it's a 10 percent alcohol beer or stronger okay okay so that's the difference that's what I know. Interesting. They also say food pairings, uh, barbecue, barbecue ribs, um, game meats, okay, and creme brulee. If you're having dessert, this is something you could pair it with. So you could eat deer or venison. Yep. Or creme brulee. Yeah. With this, all right. I guess I could see that both ways. That that makes a little bit of sense. Mm-hmm. So here's what I found out on Founders, and I, and I told you this before we, uh, before we sat down here. I love reading these stories, and this one especially. If you have some time, 
go out to their website and just watch their first video. If there was some way that we could use, and I don't, obviously this is their proprietary, they made this video or whatever, mm-hmm. so we're not going to use that here. But do yourself a favor, after this is over, go out and watch that first video about them. Like, they are unapologetic about what they do. Yeah, They want to make good beer, and they don't give a damn if you don't like it. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that do, oh, right? Yeah. And it's they're going to do it their way and to hell with everybody else. And I love that. I feel like they're one of those breweries that would be fun to go to. I mean, yes. there's some that I'm like, okay, that was cool. I drank their beer, right? Mm-hmm. But there's not a whole lot that I would be like, I would love to drive there and just go and say I've been there. And this yes. is one of them for sure for me. After watching some of this, I would definitely, I'd be in the same boat. I I definitely want to go visit them. So I can't, I couldn't find a... Uh, a founded date, founded on you know whatever date. Uh, it, over twenty years old though. Like they've been they've been around for a while, but founded by Mike Stevens and uh, Dave Eng- Engbers. Engbers. Dave, I'm so sorry, I mispronounced your name there. So it's oh, well, but uh, you make a damn good beer. So I, I you know I, I figure that makes up for it right there. Um, they two locations. They have they have the one in Grand Rapids, and then they also have a tap room and brewery in Detroit. So both of them, I, I believe the Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids one was first, and then yeah. they expanded to Detroit after that. And I have a friend that's been to that Grand Rapids one, and he says, just amazing. Really? Like, just a great place to go for, like, hmm. especially there, they have, I think, some, like, uh, a college pretty close to there. So mm-hmm. there's, like, I think maybe, like, the Central Michigan College or whatever that is. The, oh, Central Michigan. Somewhere mm-hmm. in that area. Mm-hmm. So I think he went up during football season, it was just, like, a... Just a big fun, just a big party, party atmosphere in Man. that place, like all the time. Awesome. So, uh, it, right on their website, and this is this kind of goes with as you kind of scroll through their website and you look around, you know, at their different beers that they have on tap, and you know, and some of that. It's it, it says around their front page, we believe in living life without regret. It's how we built our brewery. It's our mission to encourage others to live the same way. Love that. Cool. That's and you can taste it. Like you can you can taste the how much they love. What they do in their beers, mm-hmm. um, I've got a. You, you're right. The, uh, is it the all day IPA is mm-hmm. that the great IPA? Yeah. Um, that raspberry one we talked about, the yeah, Rebeus or something like that. Yep. Um, if you've ever had that, and this is for, I, I like I said, I I don't apologize for this at all. I like fruit in my beer. I'm okay with that. Uh-huh. Um, if you know, if if there are women out there that maybe don't like IPAs too much, but like the more fruity styles mm-hmm. or whatever, if you can find that Rebeus on tap. On nitro, yeah, it's like ice cream, raspberry. Yeah, it's like a malt. Oh my gosh! And it has that. Was it called an umlaut above it? Yes, that's, that's where we're tripping up on the spelling of this the, beer. Yes, it's got non-English things in the sentence of the word. But maybe if the guys from Founders heard this, they could they could let, reach out to us and let us know. First of all, they'd say the guy's correct last name, and then they would tell us how to right. say the beer. So that'd be two good things. Yep. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> One, pronunciation of your last name. Two, pronunciation of that delicious mm-hmm. raspberry. Yeah. I mean, we'll buy it and drink it. We just can't say it. We just point to it. I, yes. Yeah. I think it's a beer that is now um, year-round. It used to not mm-hmm. be. It was a seasonal thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Founders, at least here in Nebraska, has been one of those breweries that uh, we see a lot. Of, at least I have because I've been in this uh, – I've been in the game a while, right? A little bit. Uh, some breweries come and go out of the state, right? They have – distribution here for a while and then they don't they're gone they're here founders has always been here they've never like not sent beer they always have the same amount there's always a lot of choices to have for right. founders um and i i think that that's really awesome it's, they're just a solid solid brewery yep I mean, you're looking right now i can see the picture that looks like the uh, cbs cbs mm-hmm. yep and that's always a that's always a great beer I mean, everything that they put out especially their stouts the breakfast stout is amazing i have always have that in my fridge at home that's what I would do. That's like a little boy, like eating porridge out of the right. Yeah, out of the out of the cereal bowl or whatever. Mm-hmm. I've um, seen that one. That was something I did the couple weeks ago when we had a whole bunch of snow and I scooped my mm-hmm. whole driveway. It took mm-hmm. me like three hours. That was what I had. As and that's my, what you had afterwards. That, yep. So that goes back to like, so maybe I, that that should have been the question. Not what's your lawn mowing beer? What's your shovel in your driveway? Snow beer? scooping beer was breakfast out. Okay, for sure. Hmm. That's so good. Mine they was have, the uh, the cross strain uh, holiday one, Mele Kaliki Maka. Yeah. Yep, that's a good one. Too. Delicious, kind of spicy, little a uh, little clovey. Mm-hmm. I was, but for one, it was good. Yeah, their uh, solid gold lager is 
Probably one of the best lockers out there. Oh, Founders. Founders, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, that one is really good. That's, that's an entry-level beer, too, for for Absolutely. people that are just getting into craft beer. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's one that's going to be really good. Yeah. If if the Sam Adams is a little too heavy for you, mm-hmm. right, then this is a this is a nice entry-level lager. That's the good thing about breweries that make lagers is they're not half-assing it, right? Mm-hmm. They want they want your dollar for sure, yep. but they want you to drink their styles of beer. Yes, you know I've been in so many breweries where somebody comes in and they're like, "Give me a Bud Light," and they're like, "We don't sell that here. This is a brewery, man." Yeah, but this is something that's close, and if you can get them to stay, especially like in a football tailgating environment, yep, you know, like something like that or a concert pre concert thing, if you can keep them there and, and get them hooked on that beer, you know, you you've got you've won the day for them, and you probably get them back. So exactly. These people that do have these gateway beers, it's a smart idea, I think. So you're right. As the, the further you get into this, mm-hmm. the flavor profile changes. It yeah. gets a little less peaty, scotchy. Yep. Bitey, I think. Bitey, Just like, yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't get that. But you do get the sweetness. Like, yep. as, a, as I'm towards the bottom now, it, it's definitely sweet. sweet yeah, thing. you definitely do. It's Okay, so it's better after you get into it than that first drink. That first one was... It's a shock to the system. Yikes. A little bit. Mm-hmm. But also, if you if you wait a year... Like I do on these, mm-hmm. you don't have that initial knock your head back sort of. It'll mellow down. Yeah, um, for sure. Hmm. I don't know a whole lot of nurses that are traveling on the road while they. Uh, well, you know, they got a perm address somewhere, right, Rich? That's true. They just true. stock it up, come back, pick it up in a year, and you take it be out t- again. You wouldn't be tempted to drink it at that point either, right? I mean, because it wouldn't be there. You wouldn't be right. You don't have it with you. That's what I need. Hmm. I need. A, I need another perm address <laughs> to store my beer. Oh boy. Okay, so what's the uh, you, you've got you got something special? Then, I do. Right? This is something that is like top shelf creme de la creme. I've never seen it in this before, uh, but it, when I saw it, I thought, "Oh, New Year's Eve instantly." Okay. What is something that you do on New Year's Eve? Not you, Jamie. Not this year. Mm, true. Yeah. Champagne. Oh. Right. Yeah. 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 Every popping I was bottles. Thinking, I was thinking of other pop, stuff. Pop, pop. But okay. Yeah. You're right. Champagne. What is he? What is this? Oh no! What's that? <laughs> that is, that is Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. It's the champagne of beers, guys. And it's in like a champagne bottle. Oh yeah, this is legit. This is a uh, just special for this time of year. I brought real glasses for this, Rich. Mm. Don't worry about sullying oh, okay. that one. All right. I got even one for Dolan. You want to know a secret? What? Never had Miller High Life. I'm not before. surprised. Never. I'm not surprised. I'm going to let you do the honors because it's got that real fancy foil cap fancy on the top. Fancy, foily. All right, well. We but I've got, uh, I've got the history of this beer and uh, the logo, which I think is pretty iconic. Mm-hmm. And I've got some history on that, too. So awesome. So I'll spill the beans while you're careful with the cork. <laughs> you broke your beer It opener? broke my bottle opener. I told you this is the creme de la creme, man. How? Here, I got one. Never leave home without a beer bottle Look, it's, opener. It's just, and they're both Sierra Nevada too. Well, hopefully this one has a better fate. If, if Sierra Nevada is listening, I need another. I need another. Yeah, we bottle need a opener. freebie that we got at the beer fest. Damn it! Just use your teeth if it don't work. Oh, there it goes. You got to get through that foil. Okay, uh, this beer came out 1903. First time. This one specifically. Yes, Miller. No, not that. That bottle. <laughs> that wouldn't be very good. No, it would not. This this brand, this flavor, this name, Miller High Life. So that's what 115 years. If I'm doing math right. I'm really bad at math. Uh, let's see. 4.6 percent IBU, or 4.6 alcohol, seven IBUs. So hardly any hop no, flavor at yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, they don't want to get in the way. Oh, careful with that. Look at all the bubbles, just like. I'm intentionally trying to. I feel like uh, you need to put more in there. There you go. There we That's go. a better pour. There you go. there you go, Dolan. Dolan gets to celebrate uh, New Year's with us? Is that the... Yeah, he's not driving tonight, so That's true. we'll let him have a little bit of this. I can't believe the Miller High Life broke my bottle opener. Man, that is a sad situation. Yes, it is. That Look at that bottle. I mean, first of all, pretty legit, right? Yep. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. 1903, the beer comes out. Okay. Uh, they make a logo, which is the girl. Mm-hmm. Um, in the earliest version, she has a real pointy straw-looking hat, and she has what I would describe as a whip uh, from a tiger event or a lion event at a circus in the first version of this logo. Okay. Then it was updated. 
1907. They put her in the moon, sitting on the crescent moon, sitting on which the moon, is pretty right. iconic, right? Yes. Um, I did find out that back in the late 1800s, that was something that a lot of, a lot of artists were doing, was painting girls on the moon, and that was a like a trendy thing. So it wasn't like they had this great idea and came up with it. It was a bunch of people were doing it too. Um, but nobody knows who the girl is or where it came from. So, so she, there's three she, stories. Okay. One story is that it was supposed to be a picture of the owner, Mr. Miller's granddaughter. And they painted a picture of her and used her as the logo. Okay. Second story, I have the guy's name, A.C. Paul. He was the guy that was in charge of the um, advertising company or whatever that worked with Miller. Mm-hmm. And he lived in Wisconsin, and he was taking a walk in the woods, and he got lost for like a, for a good amount of time. Okay. Probably started to panic a little bit. Mm-hmm. Had a vision, looked up at the night sky and sees a woman sitting in the moon. And he thinks, holy cow, this is amazing. Gets back the next day, draws it up. That's the logo. Did he eat some mushrooms in the woods? Well, they said either that or maybe he had a whole bunch of the high lifes with him. Mm, Maybe. And the third story is that it's probably just some art that the family bought somewhere because they were making this all over the place. Mm. And everybody kind of feels like that's what happened. Even the brewery doesn't know. Oh. That's what they say. Really? This was one of the first bottled beers um, available back in the day because... Uh, like early 1900 or so. Let's take a drink of this, by the way. I saw, um, yeah. Let's get a smell of that. Mm. Hmm. Right? Yeah. You know what? A little champagne. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. I knew it. You took my line. You stole my line. <sighs> it's so good. Um, back in the day, when you would go to the bar, and mm-hmm. you'd be like, you know what? I had two here. Wife's at home with the kids. I got to get going. Yep. I need a sixer for the road. Guess what your sixer was? It was a bucket of beer because there was no bottles. They weren't canning. So it was on tap. It was from a keg. You're not carrying a keg home. Right. So you would have a bucket with a handle on it, and it would have your bar's name on it or the beer's logo on it. It was like their advertising. There's a cool old Hank Williams song. I'm going to throw this in there because I love music. Yeah. He's got a song called There's a Bucket's Got a Hole in It. A Bucket's Got a Hole in It. And he says that a few times. I can't buy no beer because the hole in the bucket, the beer will just fall out the bottom, so he can't get his beer to go. So they're just putting beer in a bucket, and yep. you're sloshing that home. Metal bucket, yep. And I'm I'm sure you're stealing sips on the way. I would. Uh, I would. You know, it's like you're at the gas station with that big Coke or whatever. Right. You're taking a couple drinks before you put the lid on. It's the definition of roadie. For sure. Right. So you have a bucket of beer, and then these guys came along and bottled it. This was, in its day... Like one of the most expensive beers that you could buy. And this is hence the champagne of beers. Champagne. It was in the champagne bottle style bottle mm-hmm. back then. And the quality was real high. The cost was high. You had to pay for the quality back then. And this is what what it is now. So 115 years later, here where, we are. I, I got to tell you, where has this been? I like this. See? I like this a lot. This could be the new Lawn Mown beer. It's really good, I think. It could be. And you see them all over, like the places Dolan's hanging out. They totally. got Miller High Life long neck bottles. Totally. Right next to the PBR Tallboy cans, yep. you know? Those are things. We still need to do that one someday, by we the way. We will. Okay. Let's see. What else do I got on this? Oh, 1944. Um, grain shortages because of World War II. Yep. They cut all the kinds of different beer because they're making a lot of different names of beer like they do now. Mm-hmm. The only one they kept around was this one. This was the flagship beer. Okay. That's also the time where the girl in the moon disappears from their advertising, their marketing. It's all gone. Okay. She comes back only in 1998. Wow. Shows back up again. 40, 50 years almost. And then, I think I had it, they updated her in 2010. And they, uh, let's say they gave her a little bit more pronounced uh, bosom Mm, area. Yeah. Yeah. That happened, yeah. and they kind of changed her hat a little bit to look less uh, like a witch costume hat. And uh, you can buy all sorts of merchandise with her on their website right now. Still looks like a sombrero, though. Kind of does, yeah. but that's that's pretty true to what it looked like originally. Hmm. They have not changed it a whole lot. Okay. They did change it for uh, around that 44 time. Before they took it away, they changed it so, oh, it was afterwards. That's what it was. 
after the 40s, when they sold, like people kept buying their beer as a thank you to the customer, they changed it so that she was facing out on the bottle oh. as a, like a, hey, thanks for supporting us. Here's my full profile face. Here, so you can see my bosom. Yeah. And every, okay. you know, real whatever. And then after that, then they took her off the it bottle. It didn't for take like 50 much years. for uh, dudes back in the day, I guess. Or still now. But okay. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Dudes are dudes. Why is there – so if you look at this, and next time next time you're in a store and you look at the uh, the Miller High Life, there's one, two, three, four, five, six stars. Yep. Like three more pronounced and then three very small ones. And then if you'll – you probably – I don't know if it – turn it this way just a little bit for me. They don't have it on this, but on the normal bottle, and Dolan can attest to this, there's an X at the top of the label, and that's like to – it's a callback from some of their advertising from like the 40s. So it's a little bit more – exaggerated of the Miller High Life logo at the bottom. Okay. But it's up at the top of the oh, bottle, and then she sits on there. So where the gold foil is on this one, since it's limited, right? Um, normally it would be like an X, which where'd is you, just how it used to Where'd be. you find this at? Where, where does this... I picked this up at um, uh, Beertopia. Okay. After the uh, Christmas holiday beer fest, I saw it there, and I thought, hmm, this is going to be something that's going to be my back pocket. I like it. So as much as it's the you could get it at a gas station, right? Mm-hmm. Cuz it's 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 everywhere. Yeah. It's they do these limited edition bottles like these special ones. I've never whatever. seen this before. I've this is the first time either. that I've ever seen it in a bottle like that, and that's the reason I bought it. Hmm. Um but it's kind of funny because it, it started out as like a super upper crusty beer. Like mm-hmm. it was like the rich guy's beer, right? And now it's known as being the working man's beer. Yeah. Or the dive bar beer, and it's everywhere you want to go and it's always there and it's pretty cheap now comparatively. I mean, when you're spending eighteen dollars a four pack for an IPA right. that tastes like bubble gum and, and thistles, yep. Or you can buy this for like a thirty pack for like twelve bucks. Who's laughing now? I don't know. I know. Where was this in college? I guess we were drinking Old Milwaukee and you Keystone were just, Light. You were two two steps below. You I needed guess. to come up to the high life. I got to come up to the high life. I actually still have some Keystone Light left from a uh, from a holiday party from the '90s holiday I was party. Say, was it in 1998? Yeah, well, it was a '90s holiday party, like a '90s Halloween party. Yeah, I got like two or three of them left. I've just been slowly working my way through right. them. You mix them in there, you don't notice. That's a that's a kind of a pro tip I learned. Like yeah. after you've got, I mean, in my my story is not normal. Let's just say that, Dolan. I have two and a half craft beer freezes, like fridges full of beer. <laughs> two so and a half. Yeah, so that's not normal, right? Uh, but let's say you've had one, maybe two craft beers, and you're, you feel like you just need one more to put you over the top. Sure. You don't want a, like a $12 bottle. No. That's why you got one of these sitting around. You bust into these and get yeah. the job done. See, that's why I don't I don't mind the Coors Light every once in a while. You don't Same mind thing. the Bush Light, right? Yeah. It's... I mean, there's a reason it sells, you know, yep. 89% of the... The marketplace is this side of this kind of beer. So, is that a real stat? Like eighty nine percent is still just the. I think that's about where it is now. It used to be a couple of years ago. It was like ninety four percent was still domestic beer, Coors, InBev, yep, that sort of thing. Yep. And I know with all of the breweries open in the last two or three years, it's been an explosion. I haven't seen that stat, but that'd be where I'm guessing, as it's probably eighty nine to ninety percent now. I could see that. I bet you're right. I like this one a lot. How, where, beats the founders today, huh? Where does this no 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 now founders is completely different, right? It's a totally that's yeah, totally, this is a totally different style. Totally different. One of the things that's unique about this beer is that it's a when you were said you said the word proprietary earlier, mm-hmm. they have proprietary claim on a malt that they use. It's just called or the yeast. It's just called Miller Yeast. It's theirs. Nobody else can have it. And they use this thing called Galena hops, which they tweaked in their 1930s chemistry labs okay. to stand up to the clear bottle because most beer bottles are brown or green yes to keep the light out because light breaks down the beer a lot faster yep so they brewed a beer with hops that they had tweaked and grown to withstand the um the sunlight because they wanted you to see it in the bottle clear like a champagne bottle sure so that's something that they did and they haven't changed that as far as i know the recipe is the same since at least the 30s. That's smart. Pretty cool. Interesting. So not even those bastards at, at Budweiser could could use that. Nope. Uh, it's no? their yeast. All right. I usually would apologize, to, but I'm not going to. Well, you said, I mean, it's the name of the beer right there. Right, exactly. So there you go. So that's what I got for you. That's a surprise. Happy New Year. I love this. If I had a sound maker, I'd blow on it or 
could, whatever. Could Dolan have. insert like a little sound, a, a sound effect for us? Oh. Maybe? That's as good as I can do. Happy New Year. For sure. Yeah. He's not even paying attention. He's no, he's not. A beer. He's not. He's just, yeah. We should have never gave him a beer. Halfway My through bad. that. I know. That's the problem. You live and you learn. It's like feeding the gremlin after midnight. Look what happened. <laughs> we're never going to get him back. I'm looking forward to this year. I think we're going to do some fun stuff. Um, we've got a lot of, I have a lot of big ideas. There's a lot of beers I want to try. There's a lot of styles I want to try yeah. that I've never, one that I've never tried before or two that I've tried and maybe don't appreciate and maybe need more information on. So, How about uh, resolutions? You got any? Mm. You know, I one, listen to more podcasts. Yeah, that's you know, that's just one of the things. I have quite a few that I follow that uh, they just kind of build up in my phone and then I delete them. Yeah, I need to listen to more. So shameless plug for our podcast here. I don't know. Podcasts I do, are pretty great. I, I think I listen to ours. So I and this is my wife makes fun of me. I listen to ours just because I critique myself. Yeah, I do and, the same thing. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I think we're pretty funny. A little bit can't hurt. I like when we make fun of Dolan. We sound better when we're drinking. I know that. That is a hundred percent true. Drinking, it's even better. It's even more funny. Yeah. If, I if would suggest drinking. drinking before you listen to us and during, and then during. Yeah. How about you? Any uh, any resolutions? Kind of along the same thing what you're saying, but just more, just having some more time for me to do stuff. You know, like l- read a little more. And how old's your boy now? Uh, he's two. He'll be three in about a week. You see, you'll you'll have more time yeah. once I get a little bit older. He's he's just about now to the right age where he can go get me a beer if I describe it to him. He can't I, read yet, but he knows it. Oh, he know, knows. I have a scary guy on the label there. Maddox is trained. That's he good, knows, see? and now he can. Now he's nine, so he's been able to read for a while. Yeah. But now he's reading beer labels, and so, which is bad because then he goes to school <laughs> and he tells, "What'd you do this weekend? Oh, I, I went dad. to the brewery with my dad." Yeah. That was yeah. that's bad. He didn't he didn't tell the part about how we had a craft soda and played a game and <laughs> met new friends. Right. He just said Dad was at the beer bar. We played we played sorry, we played checkers. Yeah, he leaves that out. He leaves all that out. Yeah. No, Kids. I know. Well, get used to it. It's coming for you. So it'll it'll happen. So I want to read more too. I think that's the other thing. I want to read yeah. more. Reading's good, I think. Yeah. So all right. So lots of fun stuff this year. If you haven't um, please subscribe to our podcast on Apple iTunes or Dolan. Where else are we? We're on Stitcher. 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 If you're on, S- you know uh, who's on Stitcher, by the way. Who's on Stitcher? Mark Marin. WTF? That's my go-to podcast. Really? Every week I listen to it. Two two episodes a week. Okay. On Stitcher Premium. There you go. Uh, we're on Spotify now. That's awesome. Are we really mm-hmm. serious? Yes. This is news. Why didn't you tell me? This is. This I'm the is... king of Spotify. You are the king of Spotify. Well, at least in my little world, but all right. I'm going to add that to the queue. Look for look for Brian's Spotify. SoundCloud. We're on the SoundCloud. We are on SoundCloud. Tune yeah. in. Tune in. So we had to buy a new refrigerator. The refrigerator has like, it's a there's like a tablet on it's the refrigerator. It's a smart fridge. It's a smart yeah. fridge. And Tune In and SoundCloud are one of, are two of the choices. The on apps there. that are like right in there. I have listened to our podcast <laughs> on, our, on my refrigerator. It's just dorky as hell. Uh, I think we're living in the Jetsons age right now. We Rich. are the wow. Jetsons. Wow, that is amazing. I know. Podcasts in the fridge door. Amazing. Yeah. So if you don't know, Brian uh, produces a Spotify playlist for us every Monday. So every Monday. Monday it comes out, yeah. Yep. And then on our uh, on our Instagram page, on our story on Monday or Tuesday. Is it Monday or Tuesday? I can't remember. It's Monday. Instagram Monday? and Snapchat. He tells us his Facebook favorite too. song from yeah. the... Uh, from that playlist for that week. So if you're not, you, you can find it on Atlas and Friends. If you're not on, if you're not on Facebook, please do so. I know like three people that aren't on Facebook. And they're mm. like the only three people left in the world. Yeah. Probably. But you can find that playlist there. You can also find this on there as well. So you can listen to us virtually everywhere, even on your refrigerator. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> if, you're, if you have Rich's fridge. I guess. Right. Hey, happy 2019. Let's do this. All huh? right. 2019. Happy New Year. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>